Hello everyone, and welcome to another Monster Hunter Iceborne video. So it's the day after the Monster Hunter World Iceborne presentation at E3, and I'm here to compile all the known changes we've confirmed from watching and playing the demos. I want to point out that even more details will probably emerge, particularly very fine details about how the weapon changes are working. So keep your eyes on the comment section, let's get started. Change number one, Master Rank Anjanath Hunting Horn comes with the Attack Up Large buff, which means it's also coming with the Attack Up Extra Large buff, because that's what it turns into on the Encore. Change number two, Hunting Horns are confirmed to have a fourth note and new never seen before buffs. Change number three, some kind of new Horn Maestro skill exists. You can see it, it's larger for some reason, and we don't exactly know what it does. It might just be a way to extend the duration of those, those new uh, note number four buffs we were just talking about. Change number four, items now have auras similar to the PC's light beam mod. Okay, so this was one of the recommendations I uh, had in my own video when I was talking about changes to Iceborne. I said they should just copy off of that PC mod. That's exactly what they did. Change number five, mantles now have decoration slots. So you could have your Rocksteady mantle and some skills in that Rocksteady mantle. Of course, the question is, uh, are those decorations always active because you have the gear with you or do those skills only activate when you're wearing the mantle i'm gonna guess they only activate when you're wearing the mantle the other question you might have is will the boosters also allow you to include decorations seems like kind of an odd thing because you don't wear those Change number six, there's a new small monster called a Wulk. It was used as a Raider Rider. We don't know if there's going to be a great version of it, kind of like, you know, Jagras, Great Jagras, or if it's going to be a standalone small monster like the way Shamos is in the Coral Reefs. Change number seven, there are new level four decoration slots. This is presumably going to make all of the old armor in the base game immediately obsolete, not to mention the new armor starts at 130 defense, which is a very large difference from our current rarity eight armor. Change number eight, the sharpness bar now shows what your weapon's sharpness will look like even if you haven't added five levels of handicraft to it. This is just a quality of life change. No one has seen purple sharpness so far in the demo. Change number nine, the name of the new base is Saliana and is more of a compact hub where you can do all of the things you normally would do without having to travel up and down a lift or having to run across an area. They haven't shown off the gathering hub yet though. Change number 10, and Tekka, which are essentially Kelby, but for snowy regions. Actually, I just ran into these guys in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. These were spotted in the demo. Change number 11, there's an unexplained set of armor that's called Direwolf armor. It's very likely going to be like the chainmail armor. You can probably just go purchase it because it's kind of like the very early, early, early armor in the new expansion. We don't know that for sure though. It could actually belong to a Direwolf monster. Change number 12, we got to see the Palicos using the new Revive Vigor Wasp Spray, which is a pretty significant buff to Hunters, so hopefully the game's difficulty is scaled up properly to compensate for all the extra lives we'll have, right? Like, where you normally would have died, you, you get to live, that's, that's a pretty large buff. It's basically like having a, a free cart. You can have that, you can have the gut skill, you can have feline insurance, it's gonna be pretty nuts though, right? Change number 13, there was this amazing new canteen animation from the Graham Meowster Chef. Green food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my god. These animations are some of the best in the game. These, these cutscenes, I mean. Oh my god. <laughs> That's exactly whose food I'd want to eat. So you can see we've got some uh, nice, hearty, warming looking dishes for the cold climate, so like stews and so forth. Change number 14. Also, this Palico outfit needs to be acknowledged for its hilarious design. Change number 15. There's a new mini game called the Steamworks where you feed it fuel and then you have a chance for items that are like rewards. But honestly, it didn't seem that important in the presentation. It did have a funny cutscene with the handler using the steamer to cook her yams. 
Change number 16, your housekeeper Palico can now be talked to without having to go inside of your home, which gets rid of an entire load screen that you would normally have to deal with in the base game. Number 17, new view mode lets you take selfies. It's cute, but not really a big deal to me. Sadly, there were no new monster reveals at the E3 presentation, so this tells me it may be a little while before we get some other big news. Change number 18. Gourmet Voucher returns, but we haven't confirmed exactly what it does. In previous games, it made all of the ingredients fresh, so we could probably assume that's what it's going to do here. Change number 19 is a large one, so we have this thing called multiplayer difficulty, where uh, if you jumped from one player to multiple players in your match, you would jump from one player difficulty to multiplayer difficulty. And when this happened, the monster's health would scale up and how it's affected by ailments would scale up, how, how does it flinch, right? All those things would scale up. And it would do that even if only one more person joined. However, it now it only scales from one player to two player and then to three and four players. So it's easier essentially to play with just one friend helping than it used to be. Also, when your teammates leave or get disconnected, the difficulty scales back down as well. So let's say you had three people in your match, that means you have the three to four player difficulty with the monster that you're fighting. And then one of those players leaves, then it's going to scale down to two player difficulty. And let's say the last person leaves, it scales back down to solo play. So it gives much, much, much better. That's a large improvement to the multiplayer, an improvement that I've been calling for for almost a year. Is, is it something we very badly needed. Change number 20, there's an upgraded life powder called Dust of Life. Change number 21, we learned that the new Clutch Claw can actually be spammed, all right? So a lot of people were speculating whether it's like a one-use thing and it has a big cooldown or it can only be used under certain conditions. Nope, you can use it over and over and over again. However, it works just like Switch Axe latching, where you aren't truly mounted on the monster, you've just grabbed onto the monster and you're still vulnerable to any of that monster's attacks. So you could spam it, but it's actually very dangerous to be spamming the Clutch Claw because while you're latched onto the monster, he could use a regular melee attack and you're gonna take damage from it and be sent flying off. You know, his body, his body when he's using a melee attack is going to count as a hitbox. You're literally touching that hitbox. So you take damage from it and all of that time you spent grabbing out of the monster is wasted and it doesn't really do a lot of damage from what we're seeing it's just a way to soften up the monster's hide which brings us to change number 22 monster parts softened by clutch claw will show up with markings you'll remember some weapons will cause a clutch claw softening other weapons will cause the monster to drop a pod change number 23 when you deal damage to a softened part a special icon is going to show up around your damage, kind of like the way the game tells you, uh, well, it gives you a hit confirm when you've landed a critical hit. So this leads me to speculate a few things. This makes me speculate that we saw some new uh, decoration slots for level four, four decorations. We know we're getting new skills. I'm gonna bet you right now, there's going to be a skill kind of like critical boost except it deals bonus damage to softened parts i'm also going to guess that there's going to be some skills that increase slinger pod damage change number 24 the raider rides are not directly controllable we already knew this because of what capcom said in their twitter however they actually looked pretty useful for gathering items and tracks the little monster just runs from one to the other very quickly and they'll even chase the target for you Change number 25, when you dismount the Raider Ride, you get to use a jumping attack because you're literally hopping off. Uh, so this means whenever you're approaching the monster on your Raider Rider, you can expect to deal a little bit of mount damage and maybe get a mount on the monster. I also heard some people mention that the Raider Rider can become tired. So there must be a limit to how much you can use them. I don't know how that works yet. Change number 26, people noticed that the radial menu might be getting a change where it no longer is tied to each individual item loadout. Change number 27, people are speculating that you're going to be allowed to bring five throwing knives with you on quests, kind of like the way that you can bring them, uh, you can bring gear. Also, players noticed you can see what your slinger pod ammo is underneath the reticle for which throwing knife you're holding. So the way it works right now, let's say you, you pick up some stones, right, and, and you put it into your slinger. Uh, and then what you do is you grab your flash pods and equip that as well. What happens is you're still holding the stones, you just can't see it anymore. Well, now you're gonna be able to see that you're still holding the stones. And that's the end of my list. Let me know which changes you're most excited for and let me know if there's anything I missed or could have elaborated more on. 
I also want to take a moment at the end here to give my opinion on the presentation itself really quickly. I've read a lot of negative comments about how the E3 presentation was kind of a letdown because it seems small and there was no new details on new monsters. Here's my take. I think Capcom should have saved the story trailer for E3 and then released it alongside all the terrific trailers we saw like the Elden Ring trailer from FromSoft and the Cyberpunk trailer. Then we would have seen Tigrex and Glavinus for the first time at E3 and it would have been great news with a lot of hype. Then Capcom could have easily followed up the next day with the Tigrex demo that we just saw and mostly everyone would have been agreeing on what a great job Capcom did at E3. But by releasing the story trailer a week earlier on their YouTube channel like they did, our expectations had shifted for E3 because we all assumed we must be getting something amazing at E3 that could either match or outdo the story trailer in terms of like hype and excitement. So those are just my thoughts. It would have been a very small scheduling change to release the story trailer like a week later, and this would have made their E3 presence seem way beefier. All right, well, I think I've said enough. I wanna thank all of my new recent subs on Patreon for their support. Thank you very much, guys. And I wanna thank all of you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.